Hi. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. <laughs> Congratulations on this record. Thanks. Um, it, 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 it's a new, it's a new baby. It certainly is, and it, it's mm -hmm. a very interesting and unique baby. I mean, before, before we explore this, because it is a fascinating record, let's talk a little bit about how you got here. You didn't grow up with throat singing. Discovered it while you were attending university in Halifax, I understand. What was it about that style that first appealed to you? Throat singing? Yeah. Um, well, I'd, I'd heard it off and on as a child, like I heard of it, but I'd never seen anyone doing it, and I was missing home. You know, I felt a little lost, you know, after leaving Cambridge Bay and going to Yellowknife for for high school because there was no high school at home. And then um, going down to Halifax was a really interesting time in my life. Um, I remember the first time I went to one of the, the, the big parks and my palms were sweating because, <laughs> because there were ducks just right there all around me and I just wanted to kill one and take it home you know <laughs> like the, wow. yeah like it's, it was a culture a culture clash and I remember being really sickened by all the car exhaust and like really just feeling out of place so I think throat singing felt like a piece of home yeah it did it, it, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong but Inuit throat singing is traditionally performed by two people, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you go about adapting it for as a soloist? Well, uh, that was a time in my life. I don't know what was happening. I think there was a breakup involved or something dramatic, young person drama. And I was had uh, been kind of very immersed in sound because I was, you know, going out dancing a lot and like raving and uh, discovering music, like doors all opening. And when I'm sad, I was listening to these like Polish symphonies and being really dramatic and weeping and all of this stuff. And my mom sent me this care package. And I remember hearing throat singing and having it like, it was like being punched in the gut. I was mm. like, this is the best. And I just started doing it in the shower every morning and I never ever thought you taught yourself yeah yeah well there was nobody there to do it wow. right? so and then over the years I've been lucky enough to have a traditional throat singer show me right show me and then your first real break comes when Bjork caught wind of of you and you went on to appear on her all vocal record medulla in, in 2004 you toured with her too I mean she herself has such an idiosyncratic voice uh, did she tell you about why your vocal style appealed to her? Yeah, she, uh, when when we she took me to the Canary Islands to record, and um, I, we went into the studio. And I'm not musically trained at all. I can't read notes. I don't do any of that stuff. And I sh she said, "I'm just going to play this, and you just sing." And I said, "You don't want, and you're not going to give me any instruction." And she says, "No, well." That's part of the charm, isn't it? You know, like I think she she really loved the emotive part of it right. without there being an attachment to what it's supposed to be. And I think I, I, like, I like to live in a world that's not supposed to be. Ah, uh, you like to live in a world that's not supposed to be. Or it's just there already as it is it doesn't have to be anything, you know, because we put a lot of constraints on ourselves every day in this crazy society and we're running around like chickens living in this world that tells us what we're supposed to be so all the what, time. What do you do? How does one try to live in a world that's not, that isn't what we're supposed to be? I guess the more you listen to yourself, you can be okay with uh, what you what you like. What if, what if yourself is saying, I need to fit in desperately. I need to do what others are doing. I don't know. I've never felt that. <laughs> so I Lucky you. <laughs> really? You never felt like all when you were in Halifax and, and you're feeling like this outsider, um, you don't, you, you, well, I guess you're saying you didn't feel like an outsider. You, uh, or no, you, no. Um, I, I, I like the isolation of my own thoughts a lot. And I mean, I've worn clothes that reflect 
fashion styles like we were just giggling about like raver pants like the big raver pants in the 90s like I've I I just don't you can ask anyone I went to elementary school with. Like, I've just never cared. I, when my parents would, you know, let me dress myself, it was always this weird outfit. And You don't care what people think. I give zero shits about what people think. Wow. because Because there are too many personalities. And if you consider this reality as always being filtered through our form and our thoughts, like why I respect myself and my instincts and my emotions and I every day do everything I can to be a good person so I why should what someone else with their trials and tribulations their thoughts their ideas don't affect me but I love the similarities within humanity and not just humanity within life right like that's why breath breath is so important right you know, that's that's our common denominator. When you had that experience with B- Bjork, when you were working with her, that was pretty early in your career. What's what's something that you learned from her? To not care what people think. I'm part she's of that. She's that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, she's uh, she's a very very remarkable person. Like you can sense music off her when she's not make, making music. Mm. Like and she's really, really nice, and I did not find her weird. She's down to earth. She's very humble, and maybe she taught me that anything can happen. You don't have to try to make yourself sound like what is going to sell or what other mm-hmm. people want you to sound like, and you don't have to do something that already exists because so many other people are doing that. A constant theme in your work, not unlike Bjork's, is identification with the natural world. Mm -hmm. And nature lies, you might say, at the heart of this record, animism. The title itself, as I understand it, is defined as the belief that humans, animals, and even plants have souls. Mm -hmm. And uh, extended even to uh, technically inanimate objects in a different uh, vibratory plane, I suppose. Like, uh, you know... If you look at a fruit fly, a 24-hour alive fruit fly, it's not really aware that it's like every single other fruit fly that's existed for the last thousand days and just repeating this pattern. And humans, because we've detached ourselves from nature so much, have lost the ability to, like, genetic memory and instinctive patterns that we all secretly know. Like, how do you know when you see somebody... And you know you like them or you know you don't like them. Like, you know, we all have that instinct. Like, sometimes I can see in someone's movement what kind of person they are or in their scent. And things things like this that we've all kind of shut off. And animism, the hum, humanity has made a really huge error in thinking that we're above everything, you know. And God gave us this earth or whatever. But it's us that belongs to the earth, not the other way around and I think that animals that exist I've been closer to some of them than most people like uh, than to people so and how they you feel closer to animals than people some that I've known just like people like they're we're the same we're this mm-hmm. we're flesh we're meat we're so stupid to think that we're not uh most of the tracks on this record are named for particular animals mm-hmm. what, what are you what are you trying to capture about those animals in each song um, a lot of, a lot of my music, when I'm at home and I, I go out on the land by myself and I'm sitting there and quite often it's in the summer and 24 hour light and I'm alone and there's no roads if, and, you know, you're just watching muskox go by and, you know, falcons flying around and it's so peaceful and so beautiful and I find uh, within society sometimes I can take animal behaviors and apply them to humans and it makes a little more sense psychologically Mm. even so like i think that um i just like to point out all the mistakes that humans make well this is all an interesting background to this controversy that you got caught in this spring this is Um, uh, or you involved yourself in the backstory is that after ellen degeneres tweeted her famous oscar selfie 
the manufacturer of the, the cell phone made a donation to the Humane Society, a charity chosen by Ellen. Then in a move to protest the Humane Society's opposition to seal hunting, Inuit people began tweeting photos of themselves with seal and seal products using the hashtag seal fee. This is a very divisive issue, as you know. What, what, what did you make of that campaign when you first heard about it? Oh, well, this it's been a great, great learning experience, this entire whole saga of things that happened. And um, the seal fee movement itself is a really good thing because um, being born and raised up there, it's that's uh, sustenance. It's really great to get out on the land because, uh, like, like I said previously, the reason I'm making this album is... To, to get that piece mm-hmm. of what exists out there. But um, hunting and being being part of what you eat is really important. Like, it, it astounds me that people can think that their meat is just from a styrofoam package or from a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And 99% of people will see a dead animal on the ground and be disgusted, but then go eat a hamburger. I just, it's so illogical to me. I just don't understand it. And... Of course, but other people would hear you say we're, they're just like us, uh, and you're and talk about your love for animals and wonder how and why you would kill them, right? Well, you can love something and survive on them at the same time. Like you can, I'll take a fly and put it outside my door. That it hunting is not evil. Like a wolf is not evil when it hunts a caribou. Mm. Big corporations digging oil out and flying up tofu—that's pretty evil. <laughs> You know? <laughs> but uh, I, like, well, you involved yourself mm-hmm. in this campaign. You mm-hmm. joined in by tweeting a photo of, of your infant son alongside the body of a dead seal. The, the, you know this is a very contentious issue. The, the, the response was explosive. Some people called you derogatory names. Uh, mm-hmm. Others called for your child to be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. How did that all that reaction affect you? Well, actually, I was surprised because I know that it's a, it's an issue, but I just assumed that people... We're smart enough to understand that, you know, when you're in Nunavut and there's no trees and it's like in, er, and there's no vegetation for 10 months out of the year. And what you do get flown up is this floppy lettuce that's, you know, you don't think about who's grown that lettuce. Like, what about all those brown people that made that avocado be here that are, you know, people don't think about things. And I forget how stupid people are, I guess. And what happens hunting up there? You can respect the land and be part of it. And a lot of like old legends and old taboos and ideas were all about not taking too much. And people forget that we were living in direct harmony with nature at a certain point not that long ago. And what do you say to people who profoundly disagree with you? Oh, well, disagreement is expected on all levels everywhere. Mm. What I can't really say anything about, I can help to try to educate a little bit. But any, anyway, the important thing is that people understand that living living as part of flesh with a seal, like that's why I put my baby, we were at, okay, <laughs> we were at an elder's camp, which is really beautiful outside of our town. And, you know, there's these canvas tents and all the elders are out there. And one of their nephews pulled up and there was a seal and everyone was so happy about being able to eat and we were saying it was so cute like we could you know put because the, ba- the seal was still warm I was going to put my baby there and the baby was going to like breastfeed from the seal and get fat like we we're making jokes and everyone's really happy and my mom actually took the picture and I just thought it was a really peaceful thing like a and really loving thing like it's not a disrespect to my baby it's a respect for the seal you know like it's all part of the circle of everything in that peaceful way I was discussing earlier so when this stuff happened and these people it's like I just feel bad for them because they're so disconnected I mean Mm. and they and then all the crazy people don't matter because that's really like just ego. Like they get attention by abusing people on the internet, which was also, it was my first time dealing with trolls and the hatred and what people are capable of. And it goes back to that decision of trying to be a good person Mm -hmm. every day. Like you're, uh, yeah, you're technically allowed to, to treat people like that, but you've decided that that's your path and that's kind of sad. Let me ask you about what you hope people take from this record. I mean, it is such a animism is, is such a 
a captivating listen. But um, as often is the case with instrumental avant-garde music, there are, I mean, there's no lyrics to help provide context for the listener in some cases. Um, five different people might take complete, five different complete uh, uh, feelings away about this. And, and to me, it, fe- it feels like an adventure. I'm, you know, I, I, I listened to it in one sitting the first time I listened to it and, and uh, found myself closing my eyes at one point and just being taken, transported in a, in a way. But what do you ideally hope new listeners will take away from the experience of this record? Well, <clears throat> on an individual basis, like you, you felt an adventure, and it's like a mirror. That's and you are an adventure, so you felt it. Hmm. You know, I want people to, in each individual level, feel what they need to feel from it, and and then examine that feeling maybe. Yeah, because uh, last night we had our industry release, and there were ki- there were some children there, and this five year old was like, "I can feel it in my heart." Wow. <laughs> and this other kid, uh, this other child, said she kept. Uh, getting images of wolves Mm. and uh, yeah it's just and then uh, yeah it's just lovely on an individual level for people to take what they want or need to take from it it's nice to have you here congratulations on this record tanya the cat (laughs) (laughs) well i'm really happy you like it do you have a favorite song yet uh actually i wanted to play ouya because i that is uh, a favorite song although i think we're going to go out on caribou yeah I love the Pixies. It blew my little Inuk brain when someone <laughs> was singing about caribou. And I've got a couple more interesting covers that I'm going to do. Thank you for this. Thank you.